Today, we will be taking a look at Linux packaging formats, their pros and cons, and which ones you should use. Debs and RPMs are your traditional packages. Debs are packages used on Debian and Debian-based distros, and RPMs are used on Fedora, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, OpenSUSE, and distros based on them. They are meant to be installed from repositories or repos using a package manager, although you can also install them locally from a downloaded deb or RPM file. When you install a deb package from an unofficial third-party repo or locally, there's a chance that it may be unsafe, but if you install it from a distro-maintained repo, it is most likely safe as it is maintained and tested by your Linux distro. Like most packaging formats on this list, you can install them from the terminal and from a graphical software center, and unlike in Windows, it's a one-click install that installs the app you want and any other dependencies that the app needs to run, if they aren't already installed. An advantage to traditional packages is that if a package needs the same libraries and dependencies as another package, they share them instead of installing the same libraries and dependencies several times. Also, traditional packages aren't limited to graphical apps. The problems with DEBs and RPMs is that firstly, they require administrative privileges, which means that they have full access to your system during installation. Secondly, if you install an older package and a newer package that require the same library, the older package will want an older version of the library, while the newer package will want a newer version of that same library, creating a dependency hell. If, for example, your system has the older library, replacing it with the newer one can render your system inoperable because your current packages can't use the new library. Tar packages, also called tarballs, are quite common, but unfortunately not very user-friendly to install. A tarball is a compressed archive, in this case containing an app's source code and binary. You have to first extract the contents, and then build the app. App images are similar to apps in macOS. There is no installation, you just double click on the app image and it runs. App images don't share libraries and dependencies. Everything required to run the app is in the app image, which makes app images very portable, but also much heavier than other packaging formats, because everything is packaged in one bundle. They are also universal, having the ability to run on any Linux distro that has libfuse installed. There's also problems with app images, of course. They won't show in the app grid without the use of specific apps, and they usually don't follow your system theme. They also can't be installed from the terminal or software center. They can only be downloaded and then run. Flat packs are containerized apps that run on all architectures and all distros, no matter what version, as long as they have Flatpak installed. This also means that you can get the latest version of a Flatpak, even on an older system. Also, Flatpak is fully open source, and while Flathub is considered the main Flatpak repo, you can make your own Flatpak repos or use third party ones if you want. Unlike traditional packages, Flatpaks contain all the dependencies they need to run in one package, and if the Flatpak requires a lot of commonly used dependencies, it will separately install a runtime, which is a collection of commonly used libraries and dependencies, so that other Flatpaks that need them can reuse that same runtime instead of installing duplicates of the same libraries. Also, when you install an older Flatpak, it will still install its own older runtimes, which won't conflict with other runtimes and won't break your system. Because Flatpaks and their runtimes are containerized, if a Flatpak breaks, it doesn't affect any other Flatpaks or render the system inoperable. Also, you don't need administrative privileges to install Flatpaks, preventing them from installing any crap at the system level. You can also change the permissions of your Flatpaks and sandbox them. Now, of course, Flatpaks aren't perfect, and they also have their downsides. 
Flat packs are limited to graphical apps only, and they can use up a lot of space, especially if you install tons of different flat packs that come with tons of different runtimes, and older and newer flat packs that come with older and newer versions of those runtimes. Snaps are a universal containerized packaging format made by Ubuntu. Just like flat packs, they support all architectures and distros as long as they have SnapD installed, and in general, they're pretty similar to flat packs. However, there are multiple differences. Firstly, while Snap itself and SnapD are open source, the backend isn't, which means unlike Flatpak, where you can use and make Flatpak repos other than Flathub, there can't be any third party Snap repos, only the Snap Store. Also, snaps auto-update as soon as a new version is available, without asking. An advantage snaps have is that unlike flat packs, which are limited to graphical apps, snaps can be graphical, command line, or server apps. However, unlike flat packs, snaps need administrative privileges to install. People also say that snaps are slow and buggy, although I personally haven't experienced those issues. Also, snaps have their own file systems, which are mounted as disk drives for some reason. Like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss our awesome Linux and tech videos and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.